for the last year, I've had the privilege of being Chief Software Architect. And what I want to share this morning is the directions that have been coming out of uh, the, the chance I've had to really go through the products and have a lot more of a, an aggressive uh, unified architecture uh, than we've had, certainly for the last four or five years. And I, ho I hope you'll get a sense that I'm very excited about where we're going here. Uh, there are many elements of it uh, that are, are coming out, uh, either are out very recently or out in the near future. Uh, some of the more powerful elements are in the, the two-year time frame, and some of the things I'll talk about are actually in the three-year time frame. But it's all on one trajectory. And it's fair to say that it's, it's a new platform. Uh, it's a new platform with some, some different technologies than before. Uh, but still drawing on, drawing on the strengths uh, that we've had in the past. And just to give you a glimpse of the, the great progress we're making on these, uh, I'd like to ask Eric Horvitz and uh, Ross Cutler to come up. Uh, Eric, of course, is from Microsoft Research, and he's really pioneered this idea of putting the user back in control. Hey, Hello. Eric. How you doing? Well, as Bill mentioned, with the uh, increasing power of the PC, and we, we've been through several generations and doublings of, with Moore's Law, and the increasing bandwidth, it's really easy to say that today the scarcest resource is our human attention. Um, and uh, that, plus the incredible new connectivity we're having with the internet and information sources, means we have a little equation here that's sort of our battle cry for some of us at Microsoft Research. It's a problem and opportunity area for doing something about leveraging information at the right time in the right way um, and uh, mediating that for people. So I thought today I'd talk to you briefly about two projects, one a little older than the newer one, uh, Priorities, and uh, its descended notification platform. So Priorities provides a cross-device experience, uh, linking desktop and mobile experiences with email, appointments, and reminders, the kinds of things that you see in Outlook. Um, the idea is um, it learns about time-critical messages, the urgency of messages. For, many, for a couple of years now, we were, about two years, two, three years ago, we, we actually asked the question, could we build systems to actually learn implicitly about urgency? And the answer, thankfully, was yes. So the system lear it monitors and learns patterns of your presence, your coming and going from your desktop, as well as about your email and urgency. And then it considers this inferred urgency, as well as your calendar status and your activity, including ambient acoustics in the room and your desktop activity, to make decisions about what to do with email, for example. So it will decide whether or not to bother you with an, with an alert about a new e email that you might want to attend to right away. Or, if you're not around, think about whether it's really worthwhile interrupting you in real time with a page or cell phone call. The system also um, has a functionality that several users really enjoy, a smart OOF feature, which sends back selectively to people that are sending you urgent mail uh, a custom tailored out of office message including a time it expects you'd be back in your office again, computed dynamically. Of course, that's an option you could turn off if you'd like. <laughs> so this shows you a little bit of the, uh, a view of the, of, the, of the priorities client. The idea is, uh, in this case, we see uh, urgency scores between 0 and 100 by each message, and we're sorting by urgency. When a new message comes in, uh, in this case, um, we, it's, it's sorted in place. These are unread messages here. So I thought I'd just go live to my current uh, uh, priorities window here. You see some uh, mail that came in late last night and early this morning. Um, at the top of that list is Carl Cady, who's mentioning to me a uh, potential change of plans. We have a little ambient display here that lets this, uses alpha transparency to keep this out of the way when it's not being used. Um, and the idea is we'll bring up a, a Carl's message here. And uh, I, I see Carl here this morning, but last night he threatened me about taking his kid to kindergarten and not being able to bring the backup machine today to this meeting. That got a 91 out of 100. It was a sort of an urgent message that I should look at so I can plan to take my machine, the extra machine. I, I carried two bags in this morning instead, even though Carl showed up, I see over here. Um, notice uh, going down the list here, we see um, uh, other kinds of messages here. Look out demo at ACM. Um, we're going to be making a big splash at the ACM1 conference this year in San Jose. Um, some requests about favors, a, a letter from Heike Kinerva about some work we're doing with Office right now. Uh, and so on, going down to two here. Let's see what this one is here. Got a two out of a hundred. Uh, 
fire your boss. Work from home. Good idea, I think. <laughs> so we say that uh, typically I actually uh, threshold this priority system where I actually um, say only show me unread mail over 20 uh, on my screen here. Bring that down here. So how on earth do we do that kind of work? Well, first of all, priorities learns uh, from email. It considers all words and all messages that you're giving it for training. Uh, it looks at the length, attachments being present or not, the pattern of text and white space in email, our questions in the email, looking for the user's name, even looking for things like past versus future tense. Things in the past are not as important as things coming up on the, on the horizon. And there's a whole bunch of language associated with urgency and coordination. Of course, we have a whole bit of work on evidence for junk mail, and you can just imagine the kind of patterns we look for there. Um, we also uh, do quite a bit of work on relationships, which is important in communications. Uh, we consider looking at the header structure. Is, is the mail just to the user? Is it addressed to a small number of people versus to a large alias? Was I BCC'd or CC'd? Who's the sender? Is, it in my, is, he, is he or she in my address book? Was it a large alias sending it to me? Is it internal or external to the organization that I'm working in? And finally, we leverage the exchange information about org chart to actually look at the structure and distances among the sender and recipient. Now, it's even better than that. <laughs> we also found we can get some boost on our ability to learn about urgency by actually looking into the email and to the way people speak about time and events. And we actually go in there and get, if there's a time or event mentioned, we figure out a best guess on how far the event being referred to is away from now and use that information as well. So all together, this information is not used to build simple rules or a set of rules, but to build what you might call a decision theoretic classifiers for urgency that take a, a, a soft function of all these inputs dynamically. So when you use priorities, it runs immediately out of the box with a, with a universal abstract filter, and then it, it learns from you to get better and better custom tailoring its experience for you. Now I should say that we're very excited. We vote for a long time um, given the enthusiasm we've had from internal users about priorities, we wanted to get this into the hands of real-world users out there and beyond Microsoft. And uh, just yesterday, if you went to Microsoft.com, we went public beta on Mobile Manager, a result of collaborating uh, to um, transfer many of the mobile features of priorities into the product, into a product uh, that, that's shipping. And uh, we'd love you to basically go out to that site and pull down this beta and give us some feedback about priorities. Uh, excuse me, it's priorities little child here, mobile manager. Um, so we can make it even better by the time we go RTM. Now, priorities really set up a challenge for us. That was Outlook kind of information, and it was built for Outlook. But we really were interested in going big time here. When I mean big time, I mean all information and communication someday. And the idea is to try to build a general notification platform that might serve as an example for Microsoft product groups as to some of the deep problems here. So now consider in, your, in our lives, it's more than just email and, and, and tasks. We have messenger and telephone, live telephone calls, financial information, potentially news service. For developers, we have RAID tracking bugs. We have services like a background query and so on, even scheduling services. We want to basically have some unified way to, and, and interfaces to talk to a general notification manager that knows about all your devices as well as your context. When and where and if should you receive information given what you're doing and what's going on. And we actually built these components and strung them together into an architecture that considers multiple sources of information about your life, including your calendar, uh, desktop activity, uh, ambient acoustics in a room, uh, even video analysis and location information. Part of this work looked at what was a sufficient and expressive XML schema for notifications on, the le on that left side and on the right side device schema that would make this all work together. And of course, building uh, a lot of the componentry um, we, we looked at as, as almost fabric for, com for, for building infrastructure for software that might support in a flexible way this kind of, 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 of interaction and communications. So the heart of all this is Notification Manager, which takes in a live feed of context uh, again, like calendar and desktop information, and does, continues to do a cost-benefit analysis and information based on your context, and 
context is very important. You can always look at context as adding little coins or fish weights to both sides of that equation. And that's how we, we view it. So let me just go live now and show you pieces of a larger architecture we, that we call notification platform. So first, let me just bring up um, a, a, a context palette here. And the idea here is I'm going to hook into uh, various events right now. Uh, and what you see here is the system knows that the most recently active device is Horvitz 3, this laptop, which for now is set up as my office laptop to its knowledge because it would never bother me right now if it knew I was in a presentation with Bill. <laughs> so it's thinking, oh, I'm in Eric's office right now. Notice that here's a voice trace here. So it's actually listening to me talking. Um, uh, it's looking at my calendar, and uh, it's not finding any, any meeting in progress right now. Um, but if, had a, if, there's a, if there's a meeting on my Outlook calendar, that would, would pop up there. Um, and it's actually, it says here, visual analysis, uh, head acquired, uh, gaze away. And what's going on here right now is the whole time, in fact, uh, even during that Xbox talk in front of this uh, system, the system's been tracking my head here. It's just a laptop running all this componentry right now. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't say just a laptop anymore because these are pretty powerful machines these days. But the system basically um, can see when I'm gazing at the computer versus looking away. And that changes the equations. And let me show you a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. So the system is reasoning dynamically about my attention and my location. And right now, you see up here, it's computing that. You know, there's some probability here that this is a discussion in my office. Um, and it's also looking at whether or not this is higher or low focus activity. Um, uh, and uh, when I go to system level, minimum app dwell here, you see it thinks we're just chatting right now. If I brought up and started typing right now an application, you'd see it would shift the distribution remarkably. So let me just stream in really quickly here into this universal inbox you see in the middle of the screen a whole bunch of uh, imp different types of information, like messenger and financial information uh, and, and so on. And the idea here is that um, um, the system is actually dynamically composing the best mode to display, looking across different kinds of thumbnail versus full modes, look, adding sound or not and thinking about whether the system should go off to my, uh, information should go off to my cell phone or not. Uh, and the idea is we're getting a pricing, a dollar value to bother me right now versus a cost. Things in the black, I'm willing to pay money to see. Things in the red, leave me alone for now. So the idea here is um, uh, um, the system will render information uh, over XML, and the animations come over XML as well, including the branding. And this, was an, this is how IM looks right now with one particular UI we're looking at. And the idea here is I can basically now hover, sort of like voicemail for I am, and tell the sender that I've now finally seen this instant message. The sender has been informed that you've received this message, and so on. Um, and notice, in general, it, it's a mixture. It's a heterogeneous information here. Uh, um, I can just turn this on, and, go, and we'll just go. We can just have this go into an automotive, automatic mode here. We never will get this many things at once, typically. Um, and we see that large-scale bio company is up today a point, and uh, uh, again, um, we're considering other information here as well. Let me just do one more thing here, and I'll say uh, edit preferences. And I'm going to basically say, I, this is a little tool to help me adjust some of the preferences here. Here's how email looks when it's on a, an alert coming in from Carl Katie again. You've been bothering me all day today, Carl. Give me a call. I see you right over here. Um, anyway, um, but I can actually change the weightings on things in, in a way where we have a very big volume control on everything. I can dive down to when, weekend, weekday, vacation, what. And for example, for what, I'm going to say MSNBC source. And really amp, amp that up here to bring up news right now. I'm interested in news. I want to see a different kind of profile for news. And um, so now, basically, we'll see some news, some, some late breaking news coming off MSNBC. Uh, this is a little uh, Napster story here this morning. Napster must uh, stop creating titles, and so on. So that's basically how the system works. Uh, um, it's uh, oh, that virus is still spreading, Bill, and looks like we've shut down some 500, Fortune 500 companies here, and so on. So let's. Uh, <laughs> turn it off for now. So I wanted to basically make a comment that um, 
We're working with multiple product groups right now. Um, we think that uh, uh, we've had a, we have a deep understanding of notifications and how to abstract this to different kinds of services, including communi real-time communications. Um, and uh, we hope to bring this kind of context-sensitive uh, uh, eventing and notifications to a whole line of Microsoft products and services. So next, Bill, I, I, uh, um, I believe we have an interesting meeting scheduled next door That's over here. Right. And uh, it's my colleague, uh, Ross Cutler from Microsoft Research, uh, who's working on some innovative ways to capture meetings. And uh, now that my assistant should know about this, and we shouldn't <laughs> be hearing too many uh, more alerts during this meeting. Uh, so today, I'd like to talk about uh, some new camera technology that we're developing at Microsoft Research. Uh, this uh, camera technology is motivated to better enhance the video conferencing uh, that we do a lot in our everyday lives. Uh, this new type of camera allows us to see 360 <laughs> degrees. Uh, it's made out of very inexpensive 1394 cameras. Each of them costs about $50. And we use fisheye lenses, which give a very wide field of view. We, we undistort the lenses, the images that we're capturing from each camera, and we stitch them together to create a panorama image. So we can see at the top window here, we have a 360 degree, it's actually about 300 degrees because we're not showing the audience uh, of, of what's actually going on in real time. And we're using just a standard PC to do this, an 800 megahertz PC. And uh, we also have a microphone array at the base of the camera, which allows us to detect who's actually speaking. So if we go around the table, the bottom window here will actually show who's speaking. The microphone array has uh, four microphones in each microphone and it's actually doing triangulation to determine who's, where the sound source is coming, that is, where somebody's coming. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, why don't we just go around the table to see how we might actually use this in a video conferencing situation. Uh, what do you think of this? Uh, it's great. I, you know, it's, people don't have to come to the real